Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Kayla here. Thank you all so much for clicking on today's video. In today's episode, we are going to be decorating the kitchen for fall. And y'all know I cannot wait. This is like the last major room in the house that needed to be decorated for this season. And now that it's done, the house is just feeling more complete and more fall-like. And also in today's video, in the second half, we are going to be doing a lot of cooking and baking. I asked you guys about a month ago what y'all would like to see more from me. And you can leave some more suggestions down below in the comments. But at the time, one of the top comments was that you guys wanted to see me more in the kitchen cooking and baking. So I was like, okay let me pull out some cozy recipes real quick so that's exactly what we'll get to later on so I'm starting off just by wiping off the counters and I do want to rave on these new cleaning products that I've been using lately they're called koala eco I'm just trying to get into more natural cleaning products so I've gotten rid of like all my papalusas all my comets and things like that and if you know me you know that like I was obsessed with using those type of cleaners, but the truth of the matter is, is that they can be very harsh. So this Koala Eco brand, you guys, it smells so, 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 so good. Um, we've actually discovered it when we were in California and our Airbnb host was using like this whole line within the home. And I was like, wow, this smells so fresh, so spa-like, so clean. So I went ahead and purchased a set for our home and I have it all linked down below guys. But I just wanted to highlight that and I love like the design of the products. It just looks so beautiful. So I put them on a little tray and then I'm going to add a few more elements right over here by the kitchen sink to just make it a bit more functional. So I had the kitchen aid over here for a few seasons, but now that it's fall, I felt like I needed to bring the mug tree back. Even though I do plan to do a lot of baking this season, I'll just pull it out when needed. This mug tree, like it has to be in this corner, I felt like. So I have all my little totes right here in the kitchen and this is what I'm pulling from to decorate with. And so I'm going through this bin right now to find all of my fall mugs. I literally had to unwrap each one of them one by one. And then we're going to add them to the mug tree.
Okay y'all, let's pause decorating for just a sec and I wanna go ahead and thank today's video sponsor, Homoglow. You guys know that I've been working with Homoglow for a while now, I'm talking months, okay? And having a cleaner and a cleaning service is truly a game changer for our family. If you're new here or you've never ever heard of Homoglow, they offer top-notch cleaning services at extremely affordable prices. And scheduling a cleaning is super easy, y'all. All you gotta do is go to their website, put in your zip code, select a day, and time and also a cleaner that is a good fit for you one thing i love about the cleaners is that they are always on point over the course of using home ago now i've had like three different cleaners come to my house they're always on time they always bring all the products they need and they leave my house smelling so fresh and so good which just allows me to focus on other things around the house like cooking editing uploading all of the things i got going on so you guys take home cleaning off your plate and head to homoglow.com slash young lady business or you guys can scan the qr code to get your first three hours of cleaning for only 19 dollars so you guys can do yourself or a loved one a favor and book today it's an incredible offer i'll have that link down below in the description description box and thank you again home Glow, for sponsoring today's video now guys let's go ahead and get back to decorating so for this arrangement over here and this vase which is actually from sweet masonry it'll be launching very soon we'll talk about that in a sec but I wasn't really feeling the burgundy magnolia leaves that much so I was like let me see and play around with some other elements that I have I didn't specifically buy anything new for the space this year. I was just trying to use what I already had in the house. So out of all three of the different options, the burgundy leaves, the dry baby's breath. Oh, well, here's another option. <laughs> Some pompous grass and then the pumpkin picks. You guys let me know which one y'all like better, but I ended up going with the pumpkin picks for now. So now that that side of the kitchen, like over there along the wall, is decorated, I wanted to see which rug I wanted to add underfoot just to make it a little bit cozier while standing at the kitchen sink. So I tried out that green one and then I tried out this other rug that I had that used to live in the entryway when it was all black, if you guys remember that. And I decided to go with this one because I felt like it just warmed up the space a bit more, it fit a little bit better. Maybe I'll save the green and white one for Christmas, who knows. But added a few more elements over here that I found at the bottom of my tote and now we're gonna decorate the oven. Y'all, how cute is this football dish towel? I've definitely become a football girly. I love watching games, making all the little snacks and things. And yeah, yesterday you watched the UJ versus Bama game. And when I tell you, y'all, that gave me so much stress. <laughs> like, I was stressed out the entire game. I won't spoil it for you, but you guys let me know what are some of your favorite teams down below in the comments, whether it's college or NFL football. And yeah, so I just, I don't know. I just like this little dish towel a lot. And then I'm gonna add a few more. One of them is from Sweet Masonry, the one in the middle over there on the oven. Speaking of Sweet Masonry, I said I would talk about that. So let's go ahead and just chat about it a bit. So. 
Sweet Masonry is making a comeback. That's actually going to be my next video. Just letting y'all know everything that's going on with my small business. So I'm excited for that. And then the next video after that should be a fall house tour. I'm going to make a poll about the fall house tour though. Because I have a different idea on like how I want to film it. So we'll get to that a little bit later on. But I'm excited for Sweet Masonry to make a comeback. And to sell some of this inventory that I have. So Y'all just stay tuned for that. If you go to sweetmasonry.com, you can put in your email to get our newsletter and it'll have a coupon code for you. And also you'll just get updated as to when we finally release the collection for this year. And um, yeah, so right now I'm going ahead and unboxing our new pots and pans because we just needed some new ones, y'all. Our old ones weren't really nonstick anymore. So we got these from Walmart and I just love that green color. It's so pretty. And the performance of them is really good so far. One thing I will say is that they are very light and I wasn't expecting that compared to our caraway pans. I was like, these pans are super light, but for all of these pans, it was $99. And I thought that was really great because we were looking at getting more caraway pans and it was $200, $300 for as many of these pans you see. And it's just a little pricey. Um, for us. The reason we got rid of our old pans that were nonstick is because the coating was coming off in our food. And I was like, oh no. You know, like that's toxic. We can't be eating the coating coming off at the pan. Like, no, no way. So that's the only reason we got these pans, y'all. Because I was going to keep our old pans probably forever. Another new kitchen find was this acrylic cutting board from TJ Maxx. It was $9.99 and I've been wanting one of these. I was actually looking at purchasing one on Amazon, but I just wasn't sure of the quality. The reviews were kind of mid, so when I saw this in person at TJ Maxx, I was like, oh my gosh, this is great. It's like the perfect size for this part of my counter, which is where I wanted to put it anyway. You see, we have our other cutting boards right there. And yeah, I really love it. You guys are going to see me using it all throughout this video when we begin cooking and baking.
So this is going to be the last section of the kitchen that we decorate before we begin cooking and baking. And so as you guys can see, I added a garland to that top shelf just to give it some more fall vibes. I wasn't sure if I would like it, but I really did. So y'all let me know what you think. And then I added my cute little mugs to the hooks up there. Just love how those dangle and hang from that little station. Like if I was a coffee drinker, this little area would be filled with the syrups and the cinnamons and all the sprinkles and whatever else you put in your coffee. I feel like this would be so cute for coffee, but I'm a tea girly, so I want to get some more tea related things. Um, so that will probably come later on this season or maybe during Christmas I'll make like a whole tea or hot cocoa bar right here because I feel like this is the perfect area for it. And so I'm just adding a few more elements over here, some candle corners, I'm going to add some trays and just make this area uh, just so much more cozy. Okay friends, so now let's get into the cooking, baking portion of today's video. So I'm going to start off by making some Reese's brownies. It's my first time making these, but I love brownies. I make them all the time. I'm obsessed. The easiest thing that you can bake. And they're so quick, so delicious, and like I said, super easy. So we're going to make it a little fally today by adding some little fall icing decorations you guys will see those in just a second but y'all as many times as i made brownies i forgot to add the oil so <laughs> here it is spinning without the oil and i was like wait why is it so clumpy and lumpy did i forget something clearly i did so i went back and i added it and it still ended up tasting good but one thing I will tell you guys, um, I usually never cook my brownies for as long as the box tells me to because my oven, it just gets so hot. Like my oven, it does its own thing. So this time I start smelling the brownies like mm, maybe I should take them out. Went in the kitchen, got a toothpick, put it in the center. It was still so ooey gooey. I was like, all right, I guess this is, you know, I've never made these Reese's brownies before. Maybe they just need more time. So I left them in there the whole time, took them out. They felt fine, but once they cooled for just a second, you all, these brownies became hard as rocks. You hear me? Like you could chip your tooth on these brownies. So I looked up what I on earth I could do to make them softer. And you know what it said, you guys? All you have to do is take a slice of bread, put the brownies in a bag with the slice of bread, seal it up, and the next day the brownies are soft. I was shook! It, it actually worked! So that's just a little hack. If, you, if your brownies come out hard and you feel like you ruined the whole batch, just wait 24 hours, throw them in a bag with a slice of bread. Y'all, I don't, I don't know the magic behind that, but it works! science <laughs> so i'm putting them in the oven now adding those cute little sprinkle decorations from hobby lobby and then i'm gonna take them out cut them and plate them on a tray Okay. 
Okay friends, so it's a little bit later that night. Time to make dinner, y'all. So tonight, we are making an enchilada casserole. Have you guys ever had that? I've made enchiladas before, but never in the casserole version. So I was really excited for this. I saw the recipe on TikTok and I'll have all the recipes that I've used linked down below because the common theme that you guys will see is that I don't follow the recipes like to the T. I edit it for Marcus and I because sometimes we don't want that much salt or that much sugar in our recipes or that much cheese or just whatever it might be. So I'll leave the actual recipes down below. So I'm going ahead and frying up some onion waiting until it got fragrant and translucent and then I'm adding in my ground turkey meat that I got from Aldi's. Only did have the pack for this recipe but you can do more if you'd like. And then I'm just adding a little bit of taco seasoning. We buy our taco seasoning in bulk from Sam's Club and it's a really good taco seasoning because it doesn't have that much salt like those little packets do. So anyways, I'm grounding up my meat. I feel like ground turkey is the hardest thing to get like grounded up or minced up really well. I'm literally stabbing it with my wooden spoon trying to get it, you know, less chunky. But did my best with that and now I'm going to take my little pumpkin pan or pot. And this is what we are going to use to make our enchilada casserole, y'all. So if you don't have one of these pumpkin pots you can use any circular dutch oven or any circular pan you have that can withstand heat from the oven okay so this pot for example it can withstand i think up to 400 degrees and we're putting this on 350 so so all you have to do is layer your ingredients you start by putting the enchilada sauce on the bottom then you add a tortilla right then you add a little bit more enchilada sauce and you add your meat cheese repeat and you just keep repeating until you reach the top it's literally so easy and you guys it is so 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 yummy you can add as much cheese as much meat as you like you can add more vegetables in here like you can just customize it you can even do chicken instead of um ground turkey in fact i actually usually make my enchiladas with ground like with shredded chicken but this time the turkey it really tasted good like I, I enjoyed that a lot so I'm gonna keep layering this up and then we're gonna place it in the oven I think I had it in there for about 30 minutes with the lid on and then you guys will see me take the lid off and put it back in there so that the um I can get the top kind of melty now I will say I'm not able to use this pan on broil so the cheese at the top didn't get like as brown as I would like it but it's okay it's totally okay y'all this is truly such a cozy meal to top it off you can add some shredded lettuce you can add some spinach some fresh tomatoes put more cheese on top sour cream whatever you like but we just ate it just like this you guys and it was delicious so now it's the next day i have some water boiling because i make all of marshy's food fresh so i'm putting in her chicken breast letting those come to a boil while that's going, I'm going to begin making a French toast casserole. We're making so many casseroles in today's video. So I'll leave this recipe down below as well because I didn't quite follow <laughs> what the lady suggested. I kind of did my own thing. So for the french toast casserole you really don't need much but i'm making this french toast casserole kind of have like a banana cinnamon type of feel just to make it a little bit more fall like 
So I'm adding my bread. I cut that up into bite-sized pieces and then I put it into this little pan. And now I'm going to begin making my egg mixture. So I do not like French toast that is super eggy. Mm -mm. In fact, I like my French toast to be like soft, but then also a little crispy. So I use just a little bit of egg and then I use a good amount of milk. I'm adding a great amount of cinnamon and then probably too much vanilla, but y'all, it tastes so good. It's all, I'm not really complaining. And then the recipe called for brown sugar within the mixture. So I was like, okay, I've never added that before. So I went ahead and added it. Didn't really taste the difference. So you can add brown sugar if you like to your egg mixture. And now, once this is all whipped up, we are gonna begin making the like, topping, I guess you could say. So you're just gonna heat up the pan and then add some butter, as much or as little as you like. Just need a little bit to melt your sugar and all the other ingredients that we're gonna add. So I'm gonna add some cinnamon to this. I'm gonna add sugar. And then I'm also going to add some maple syrup. And then finally, the last thing we'll add is our bananas. And we're just gonna pour this over top of our French toast as a topping. Now that our topping is done, I'm gonna go ahead and add like our egg and milk mixture, getting that all in there and making sure a lot of the pieces just soak that mixture up really well. Again, you can add a lot more mixture if you like. I've seen some people cover all of their bread with this mixture, like it's completely covered. But for me, I don't like for my French toast to be like that gooey. So um, I just added basically half of what the recipe called for. And again, all recipes will be linked down below. And then I added my topping on top. And y'all, you don't even need to add any sugar, any syrup when you eat this, anything. Like, it just tastes so good as is. But when we played it later, I had just a little bit of powdered sugar and some fresh bananas on top. Now we're going to make some egg bites really really excited for these because i've never made them before but i just see them all over the place and that they're really good for meal prepping and a big reason why i am like trying to meal prep is because my husband he likes to eat <laughs> early um and i don't so <laughs> this is just great because he can wake up and he can heat up his food whenever he likes to and the same goes for me you know so I'll show you guys how I wrap everything a little bit later on so that it just stays fresh throughout the week. But I'm going ahead now and I'm grating some red potatoes because I wanted like a hash brown to go inside of our egg bites. I tried the really fine side of the grater for the potatoes and I didn't like it. So if you do use fresh potatoes, use the thicker, like wider side of your grater like how I'm using right now. It creates the perfect size like hash brown pieces and I wasn't sure if I could just put these into the egg bites raw. They're only cooking for 20 minutes and so I wasn't sure if the potatoes would cook in that amount of time. So I went ahead, I'm gonna rinse these off first and then we're gonna pop them into the air fryer just to get them a little cooked, a little crispy. And I'm gonna place these at the bottom of our, um, our baking, our muffin pan, which you guys will see in a second. And when you guys like cut up your potatoes, do y'all rinse it off after the fact? I felt like I just had to. It just felt so grainy and not the best. So I just went ahead and rinsed it off a few times before putting it in the air fryer. <laughs> So 
also y'all remember at the same time we're also making Marshy's food so her chicken breast had finished boiling it was all ready and it was time for it to be shredded up so mark is just taking two forks and just shredding it up really nicely we usually use our KitchenAid to shred up the chicken and it does a great job at getting it super duper fine but Marshy doesn't mind it either way, whether chunky like this or fine. So the reason we didn't use the KitchenAid was because as you can see here, it was still dirty in the sink from the night before when I made brownie. So this is how her food ends up looking. She loves it so much. And to supplement her diet, we also give her a multivitamin as well, just to make sure she has everything she needs. And then sometimes throughout the day, I give her like some fresh snacks. She loves tomatoes, apples, sometimes bananas, sometimes strawberries, um, watermelon. Um, she's obsessed with green beans. She loves potatoes, but you know, I try not to give her potatoes. <laughs> There's just so many things that Marcy likes to snack on throughout the day in addition to her dinner. So now we're going to go ahead and start prepping a few more ingredients for our egg bites so as you can see we have onions we have tomatoes and i'm chopping up some spinach really fine and i decided to go ahead and add some meat to this we use uncured turkey bacon we get it from sam's club uh, it's probably the best bacon turkey bacon i've ever had it's from the good shawls brand i know they also sell it at Publix, but it's really expensive there so if you have a sam's club membership you can get a whole pack for $10 and you get like 60 to 90 pieces of bacon, which I feel like is really, really good because at Publix, you get like eight pieces for five bucks. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, cut all that up and the French toast was ready. I believe I put this in the oven at 350 for like 25 minutes, I believe, but I took it out a little bit early because I did not, I was scarred <laughs> from cooking the brownies a little too long. So I took it out early before the timer went off and now we're going to begin adding all of our ingredients for our egg bites into our muffin tray. If you've made these before, let me know what you put in your egg bites. And so what I'm going ahead now and doing is cracking up about five eggs. I ended up using seven because I ran out of mixture. So if you want to use less eggs, you can always add milk to just help it stretch a little bit more and probably give you a little bit of a fluffier egg. And I also added some pepper to this, no salt because I'm gonna add cheese to a few and that's gonna give me a little bit more salt. The bacon already has salt in it. I just feel like I didn't need to add salt, you know? Um, you can also add whatever seasonings you like to your eggs, but usually I just like pepper in my eggs, especially with all this other stuff in it. And then once that's done, we are gonna pop it into the oven. I think I did for 20 minutes on 375 and they came out delicious.
in a little while we're going to begin just packing up everything so that it stays fresh throughout the week <laughs> and you guys saw i thought these eggs would just pop out because i did oil my um pan with olive oil but they did not if you have a silicone pan i feel like that might be a little bit better for this sort of recipe um, I wonder if using paper liners would be good. I'm not sure, but this worked just fine. I just had to, you know, use my fork to really scoop them out. And this is what they look like. Don't they look so beautiful? So colorful. And this is my breakfast. As I mentioned before, I added some more fresh bananas. I love bananas. And then I added some powdered sugar on top. So I went ahead and ate while it was nice and hot. And then once it cools off a bit more, I started packing it. So I'm using some parchment paper and I cut all of the banana bread into little rectangles I felt like would be, you know, good servings for a breakfast. And then I was able to get four servings out of it in addition to what we ate that morning because Marcus probably ate like two servings that morning. And then these are all of the egg bites that I have left. I feel like he ate four egg bites that morning. <laughs> he was waiting a really long time for breakfast to be ready. So by the time it was ready, he was super ready to eat all this yummy food. And it really did turn out really great. So instead of wrapping the egg bites individually, I just went ahead and put them in a big sheet of parchment paper and popped those into a container. Now y'all, we are gonna make some lasagna soup for dinner. I did a lot of cooking on this day. So I'm taking my Dutch oven and I'm adding a little bit of olive oil and then I'm going to start cutting up some onions and bell peppers. Really quickly, I showed you guys everything that you need to make lasagna soup and I will share that again as we go through but if you like to go back and pause the video you can as well like I said I'm gonna have all these recipes down below I got these onions from Aldi's the day before and you notice I cut quite a bit off because the outsides were a little bit soft but the inside was still really fresh so I just wanted to make sure I got all the bad parts of the onion off and it didn't get mixed into like all the good parts so I'm gonna chop this up really fine and then I'm also gonna chop up the bell pepper as well for this recipe we are gonna be using turkey Italian sausage um, like round turkey Italian sausage I can only find this at Publix I don't know and Publix is a grocery store here in Georgia but truly you can use whatever meat you like ground beef just regular Italian sausage, ground turkey, anything you put in your lasagna, or you can do no meat at all. This is such a good, cozy recipe. I'm obsessed with it, but I really feel like the Italian turkey sausage, it just gives this recipe so much more flavor. I've made it with plain ground turkey before, and it was good, but this just hit so different. It was delicious. Now I'm going ahead and adding all of our canned goods. We do a can of crushed tomatoes, um, two cans of tomato sauce, one can of diced tomatoes, a little bit of beef broth, and then we're going to stir all of this up. And it was already smelling so good. I did a taste test to see if I needed to add any salt. Y'all, I didn't need any salt at all. Like, it was just so much flavor coming from that ground Italian turkey sausage. So let that simmer on low for about four hours and then i went ahead and i boiled my lasagna noodles all you're gonna do is just break them into small pieces um this recipe you guys will see down below if you click on it's actually meant for the crock pot but i didn't want to cook it in the crock pot on this day so in her version she actually said that you didn't have to boil your lasagna noodles separately you can just add them to this mixture and that they would get soft but I just went ahead and cooked it because I tried doing that before when I made a chicken noodle soup and the noodles turned out so mushy some of them were hard it was just it was just terrible so I went ahead and boiled it separately so that way I wouldn't mess up my good soup because like I said the base was delicious now we're gonna add like some toppings you need ricotta cheese um like mozzarella cheese parmesan cheese and then you're just going to add this to a bowl mix it all and this is what is going to take your soup from tasting like a spaghetti soup to a lasagna soup because that ricotta cheese it just makes the base of the soup so rich oh my gosh y'all it's so delicious i wish i had some more of this to eat right now i definitely think i'm gonna keep this meal on rotation and next time i probably will cook it in the crock pot just to make it even easier so 
I'm gonna add a few dollops of this to the base of our soup and the recipe that I'm using she actually called for all of this to be dumped inside of the soup but I didn't want to do all that <laughs> so I just added a few spoonfuls to it and I feel like that was more than enough so what we did with the excess we just added a little bit to our soup when we heated it up um, until it was all gone and that worked out great Okay y'all, so that brings us to the end of today's video. This is the last recipe that I cooked. So you guys leave me some more cozy recipes or some suggestions of things that I should try down below for this season. And I hope y'all enjoy decorating, cooking, and baking with me today. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye!